Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, developer of the Integrative Movement System. Welcome to this three-part video series of Integrative Movement Insider Knee 101. So in this three-part video series, we're gonna talk about why so many of our older clients have knee issues and some simple and easy strategies you can use with your older clients to help them restore more optimal function and oftentimes reduce the discomfort related to degenerative joint disease or where there's wear and tear on their knee joint itself. So first, let's look at the alignment and biomechanics. And I'm going to make this as simple as I can. So we'll look at the right knee. So here's an example of a right knee. Here we have the femur, here we have the tibia sitting underneath it. So essentially, the knee is joined by the epicondyles of the femur sitting on top of the tibial condyles. So essentially the knee, we've learned, we've all learned that the knee is relatively a hinge joint. So it flexes and extends. However, there's range of motion in all planes. So the knee will also abduct, so that's this motion here, and it will also adduct. So this is the frontal plane motion of the knee. It will also externally rotate where the tibia moves underneath the femur or it will internally rotate where the tibia moves internally underneath the femur. So it's not really a hinge joint at all. It's really like a modified ball and socket almost because it moves through three planes of motion. So it's not simply a hinge joint. Now, what happens to our clients that causes so many knee problems? Well, generally speaking, we'll make this again as simple as possible. Your clients will lose range of motion up here around the hip and or down at the ankle and foot complex. Therefore, they will often compensate through the knee. They will create excessive knee flexion. They will often create excessive abduction of the knee or this motion here, so a more valgus knee position. And they will also create excessive internal rotation of the femur, which relatively will externally rotate the tibia. So again, the knee will go into excessive flexion when they're loading, so like during walking running, squatting, stairs, lunging, things like that. It will also go into excessive abduction or this motion here. So again, this is looking at the front side of the knee joint. And it will also go into relatively excessive internal rotation of the femur and external rotation, relative external rotation of the tibia. So that's what creates a lot of that wear and tear of the knee, which we then call arthritic knees or degenerative joint disease. And it wasn't because they were born that way, it's because they developed non-optimal alignment and control of their knee joint, usually related to what's happening above and or below it. So one of the things we're going to look at in the next video is what do we do to help these clients? Well, the first thing we wanna do is help these clients restore more optimal alignment and control of their knee. Generally speaking, what we see in our clients, this is younger clients too, but we'll talk about the older clients, is they will generally have external rotation of the tibia and relative internal rotation of the femur. The structures that cause that are your lateral hamstrings, like the biceps femoris. The IT band, where it comes down and inserts into the tibia right here, will also create external rotation of the tibia. And that's oftentimes when the clients are squatting, they go into more valgus and that external rotation of the tibia because they're not able to keep the femur lined up over the tibia and create the optimal motion as they're loading the lower extremity. So during gait, during running, during squatting, during lunging. So what we wanna do is create an opportunity for them to lengthen the lateral hamstrings and they're going to need to then learn how to align the tibia underneath the femur during loading patterns. So in the next video, I'll demonstrate how do you release the lateral hamstrings because a lot of our clients are doing a good job releasing the medial hamstrings, but not so much the lateral hamstrings in the lateral hip, and that's where a lot of the restrictions are coming from. So I'll show you how to release the lateral hamstrings, and then in the following video from that, I'll show you how to activate the medial hamstrings to align that femur better over top the tibia and the tibia underneath the femur in a functional upright position, especially for those clients that already have knee discomfort or degenerative joint disease. So this is Dr. Evan Noso with Integrative Movement Insider, sharing with you the simple biomechanics of the knee. And in the next video, we'll go over the release, which is gonna be the lateral hamstrings. And then in the third video, we'll go how to integrate this and I'll show you how to use the hip hinge pattern and a modification of the hip hinge pattern that we often use with our older clients that have knee problems. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time at Integrative Movement Insider.